okay uh, as of now we have completed the grid infrastructure uh, software installation we have verified our cluster uh, background process are up and running and we have already uh, uh, created the disk group for the database storage as the disk group called data so we have two disk groups as of now one is crs which shows the ocr and voting disk and other one is at um, the data disk group which shows the uh, the which is supposed to store the uh, the da database files now we will be going ahead with the rdbm software installation so in our uh, setup oracle is the user who owns the oracle's rdbm software so we log into the machine as oracle user here also we will be starting the installation from one node and we will be uh, completing the or or, or uh, the universal installer will be copying the oracle software to the other machine also so we we'll log in as oracle user password we have set okay the next one is that we have to set up the display so <coughs> we have unshipped the software on vaishit slash database folder okay we can just uh, see which are the files we need to un uncompress we have the two files we have the two files that is 11g uh, r2 database 1 of 2 as well as the 2 of 2 and our oracle home will be db home underscore 1 okay so we'll uh, we are in the folder we had uh, the uh, software is unzipped into the database folder so we'll go to the database folder okay and we'll call the run installer dot slash run installer Okay, the first screen is asking you uh, that do you want to um, provide the email address uh, to be informed about security issues. That means here you will be providing your uh, email address and your MetaLink password. So at that time, what happens is whenever in a security, so um, Oracle will automatically collect certain information about the um, our system configuration details, and whenever a pa security threat or a security patch being released by Oracle. Uh, which is suitable for our uh, installation or our system configuration and database version and operate system con uh, operate system at that time we will be getting an alert from oracle telling that the, you, it's it's advisable to install this patch so you know in this is being a lab environment we don't really require so we'll just uncheck it and we'll proceed with the installation you can just click on the next step looks like yeah i'll just click on the next tab so oracle will be asking you like do you want to um, do you want to remain uh, uh, do you want to remain in uninformed about the critical security issues since it's a uh, lab environment we will just select this option that means we don't want to uh, oracle to uh, send out uh, some mails whenever a security threat is coming up okay so here we are getting the installation options that is three options are there create and configure a database that means that we have to if it will give an option like install the software and then it will prompt you to create a database the second option is that install the database software only and the third option is that upgrade the existing version say for example if you want if you have the oracle at 10.2.0 or dot four, and if you want to upgrade to uh, 11 uh, 11g release two, then you have to take the second option. In our case, we will be proceeding with the, the the default uh, the second option. That is, we will be installing the software only. And once the software is uh, installed, and the next step, we will be creating the database. So we will select the install option. Next. Okay. By default, it's 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 selecting. There are two options is coming. The installation type. One is a single instance uh, database installation. Otherwise, the real application cluster installation. Since Oracle has already identified that there is a, uh, a rack, there is a cluster installed. I mean, the grid infrastructure is installed. So it is identifying the nodes of uh, part of that one and it's displaying. So in case if you want to go with a single um, uh, node installation, at that time you can select the first option. 
So here we have the two nodes by default it's selected, the uh, YSHID 11G R24 as well as YSHID 11G R25. As explained in the uh, grid infrastructure installation, we need to have the passwordless login or passwordless connectivity between the two machines. So we can just click on the SSH connectivity and give the password of Oracle and set up the SSH. Okay. Now Oracle has uh, set up the uh, successfully completed the SSH connectivity between the two machines. We can just click OK and okay. If you want, we can do a test. Otherwise, when you are clicking in the next button itself, Oracle will automatically do the setup. Yeah, uh, Oracle will do the automatic testing. So SSH is enabled. We can just click on the next button. You can see that when you are clicking on the next button, it's again uh, testing for the SSH connectivity, and uh, then it displays the uh, languages selected. We have the, we can select the English. If you want uh, uh, any other language to be su supported, then you can select the language from the list available on the left side. Click on next. Now it's giving you what are the uh, types uh, the the editions of the database whether you want to go with enterprise edition or you want to go with the standard edition we will be going here with the, the enterprise edition and just click on next because enterprise edition is by default selected now it's asking the our oracle home okay so in the initial class we have just said that our oracle home will be slash vaishith oracle base is sh EID slash eleven dot two dot zero. That is our our base and our Oracle home will be where should slash db underscore home one. This directories we are already uh, created, so we can just click on the next button. We are getting an error telling that the selected Oracle home is outside the Oracle base. It's a warning message. Since it's being the, uh, this error message can be safely ignored. So we will be clicking on, we want to continue option. And here, the next screen, it's asking which is the group for the SysDBA privilege as well as the, which is a group for the SysOper privilege. In our case, we have, uh, if you remember correctly, during the time of the database installation, we have created this Oracle user as a part of three groups. One is that O installed is a primary group, DBA, O and ASM DBA as a two groups. Since we don't have any other group, ASM DBA is required for accessing the ASM files. Um, so we will not be selecting that uh, group uh, for any of the normal database administration activities. So we'll, we'll c c keep our DB as the OS DBA group as well as the DBA uh, as the OS Opera group. And then click on the next button. Now Oracle is going to do a certain prerequisite checks. So um, since we have already performed the prerequisite checks in the grid infrastructure installation and there was not much issues, much errors other than the swap space. So uh, there is less chance that we will be getting some errors this time also. Okay, um, Oracle is telling on the two messages against the SAP uh, um, installation as well as clock synchronization. Because it, it says that uh, the time synchronization service is not running across both the nodes. We, we can resolve it uh, later. So we'll be just, um, we'll just ignoring it and we'll be proceeding with the installation. Okay. 
okay as in the case of earlier the oracle uh, as in the case of the response file creation for the grid the same way we can create the response file for the grid infrastructure also so sorry uh, for the rdbms also uh, so, so we'll be just saving that as db dot response file so that late later time if you want to do the installation in the silent mode you can do it and now we'll be just clicking on the finish button okay now oracle start the installation and like the previous um, installation it is going to do the same thing it's going to copy it uh, do the installation of the first node and then it will be copying the software to the other node also and end of the uh, process it will be running it will be prompting us to run the root.sh Normally, in this stage, uh, it will be uh, giving a doubt like uh, uh, whether it's copying the software to the second node or anything. So, when if you're clicking on the details tab, we can get more information on that. Okay, if you're coming to the bottom of the um, installation, we can see that it is copying to the remote files here. You can see that message copying Oracle Home to the other node, remote node that is Vaishit 11G R25. Once the copy is complete and once the setup is complete on the second node, then it will be prompting to run the root.sh.